All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory. B.T. Ahawa, Ba'ashim Yavashai, Ba'ashim Rechakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and blessings to the hopeful elect, teaching this word in all sincerity and truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And um, what you can see on the screen here, <clears throat> you know, is a quote from, you know, President Joe Biden. You know, he pretty much made a visit to Israel in response to, you know, this thing that's happening over there with the whole Hamas um, situation. But he made a statement um, at his speech, um, which I pretty much wanted to wanted to speak on real quick. Um, I'm not going to make this video too long. I just wanted to speak on this statement that Joe Biden made because this shows you the pride of Esau. All right, Esau being you know the so-called white man. Um, you know, starting with their elites. You know, and um, this elected president. Joe Biden, he came out with a statement, as long as the United States stands, and we will stand forever. <clears throat> but we know that not to be true, because according to biblical prophecy, there's only one kingdom that's going to stand and stand forever, and that's the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, and being joint heirs with him, by default, the kingdom of Israel, All right, which Yahweh Shai himself is an Israelite, all right, from the tribe of Judah. And... um. <clears throat> You know, the first thing, uh, you know, when I saw this, the spirit just jumped on me. I said, look, you got to do a lesson on this because um, that shows you the pride of Esau. So what I want to do is just to tackle that statement that um, Joe Biden made and show you that how that statement that was is false according to the biblical scriptures, especially when you go to Psalms 49 and 11, all right, where it says their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Right? And their dwelling places unto all generations, and they call their lands after their own names. Now, yeah, that may be their inward thought, but what's the reality? The reality is that they're not going to stand forever because all the previous kingdoms, you know, even when you look at the, when you go to the book of Daniel, the second chapter, it speaks about these previous kingdoms. Okay? Whether you're dealing with the head of gold, the breastplate of silver, you know, the bronze or brass. Okay, and then you go all the way down to the time that we're living in now, part iron and part clay, you know, at the at the feet of the statue with the partly strong and partly broken, which represents how this kingdom is divided. <clears throat> all right, and this man's kingdom is definitely divided in these last days, and they're definitely going down because it's biblical prophecy. All right, but I'm going to go straight to the point here. This is Daniel chapter 2, but the point is, you know, all previous kingdoms that have been before this one have risen to a certain point. But guess what? They've had a certain point to fall. And it's not going to be no different with this kingdom. Because Daniel 2 and 44 proves it. It says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And that's not talking about America. <laughs> all right. So sorry to burst your bubble, but that ain't talking about your, uh, your you know, your United States of America. Okay. It says, and the kingdom, it says, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now, that kingdom is going to be the kingdom, Yahweh Shai's kingdom. And by default, you know, the kingdom of Israel. Because we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. In fact, let's get Romans 8 and 16. All right, or is it 17? All right. All right, this is Romans 8 and 17. It says, it says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So there's going to come a time where we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, man. That's why the Lord said, he promised us, he said, look, he that in, you know, overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. You know, what's that, Revelation 2, 25? These are biblical prophecies, man. All right. That we're reading here, uh, Revelation chapter two verse twenty five. But he, but that which he have, all right, hold, uh, already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, 
to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So these nations are going to get ruled over with a rod of iron. All right, and yes, including those Palestinians, including those Israelis. Okay, which they that they call themselves, but we know that they're just imposters. All right, um, we know that you know strangers are devouring our land and our presence because we're the chosen people. All right, like the scripture says in uh, Hosea one. And ten, uh, you know, in the land where it said, "You are not the child, you know, you you are not the sons of the living power." Uh, there shall it be said, "Ye are the sons of the." In fact, let me get it because uh, I don't want to butcher the scripture. Hosea, uh, Hosea chapter one, verse ten. It said, "Yet shall the number of the sons of Israel be as the, be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered." And it shall come to pass in that place where it was said unto them, "Ye are." Ye are not my people. There shall it be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. So we are, all right? And we're, you know, this truth came out of America, man. Okay? You, Rabbi Abba, Elder Abba Bivens, you know, uh, late 60s uh, into the early 70s, this truth done sprung up, all right? And there it's being said that we are the sons of the living power. All right? So, we, and, you know, you see the apostles and the elders carrying on the tradition teaching the true doctrine that we are the chosen people and these curses that stick up you know stick upon our people are for a sign that we are the chosen people and there in the land of america out of that land it's being said that we are the sons of the living power so we are the princes of the power we are the chosen people and that can't be denied because the the curses bear witness to who we are as the chosen people when you read the curses in deuteronomy 28 and 15 on down okay so we got to endure this and overcome and keep the works of the Lord to the end, right? The Lord said back in Revelation 2.26, And he that keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the, over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So what's the Lord coming back to do when he comes back? When you read Revelation 19, <coughs> Revelation 19, many other scriptures Revelation 1 and 7, uh, Psalms 110 and verse 5. You know, the Lord's going to strike through kings in the day of his wrath. And he's going to fill the places with the dead bodies, man. All right? And he's going to invade this place on a gigantic so-called UFO. And this is why we was reading in uh, Daniel, the second chapter, and the 44th verse about a kingdom that's never going to be destroyed. It's not going to be left to other people. That's Yahweh Shai's kingdom. And this is what we're waiting for. All right, it says, um, verse 45 in Daniel 2, it says, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, all right, because, you know, the, the ship that Yahweh Shai is going to come back on is going to be so big, it's going to look like a giant mountain, all right, and Ezra's described that, when you read the book of 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, it spoke about Yahweh Shai coming back on a gigantic ship. All right, but Ezra couldn't even see, you know, the end of it. It was it was so big, it looked like a giant mountain. All right, it says the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. So Yahweh Shai is going to take down all these nations, taking them all out. All right, this is the real great reset that we're reading about right here in Daniel two and forty five. Right, it says, and the great and and the gold and the. It says the great God have made known unto the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. So this is a certainty to happen, and that's why, the prophet Habakkuk he said in Habakkuk two and uh, three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And it don't matter how proud Esau is, <clears throat> their pride is not going to stop the fact that these prophecies are going to come to pass. The vision are these pro uh, these prophecies, and they're set for an appointed time. So all these previous kingdoms, whether you're dealing with the Babylonians, the Medio Persians, the Greeks, all right, the first leg of the Roman Empire, they all had their time to rule, and they all came crashing down. All right, but here it is: you got uh, this this proud devil, you know, taken to the podium. 
and is saying out of his own mouth, as long as the United States stands and we will stand forever, that is a false statement. All right, that is a false statement according to biblical prophecy, and they are not going to stand forever, even though their inward thought is that they are going to continue forever. That's not the case, and that just shows you the level of the pride of Esau. Now, I did mention earlier about you know the late 60s and that, uh, you know, when this truth, you know, uh, uh, you know, came out pretty much that ties into Obadiah 1. All right. Dealing with the pride of Esau and also the downfall of Esau as well, which you can find in Obadiah 1. And I'm going to start from verse 3. It says, the pride of thine heart, which the Hebrew word for heart is love, which means the mind, right? The pride of thy mind have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. All right? Because Esau, you know, he's right at home, you know. What he's done with the earth, right, he's just turned it into a giant cave. All right, all these buildings, these skyscrapers, all right? It says whose habitation is high, right? That They like these high-rise buildings, you know? They like these condos. They like these these giant caves that they built on the earth, okay? And even that, you know, whose habitation is high, that's a, that's a high mindset. It's like, you know, you're pretty much proud, all right? That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Now, this is what Biden's saying. He's saying that the United States will stand forever. That's the mindset of Esau. Who shall bring us down to the ground? We're going to stand forever, right? That's a boasting in themselves. It says, Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and thou set thy nest among the stars, all right, with their space stations, their international space stations, they claim to go to the moon, right? They set their nest among the stars. They got their space weapons, space programs, the sixth branch of the American military, the Space Force. I think that was set up by Trump, you know? It says, Dense will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So the Lord said, when you claim, you know, when you set your nest among the stars, okay, when you punch above your weight, that's when the Lord's going to bring you down. And they claim to go to the moon in late 60s, like 1969, specifically when this truth, the time period of when this truth came out. Okay. And that's when you had that, that song, uh, um, Poor Me, the Israelites, that by Desmond Decker, you know, that pretty much became a big hit, you know. So that, that's, that's no coincidence. Poor me, the Israelites. And this truth started coming out. 1969, 1970, man. All right? So this devil is going down. So he's pretty much on borrowed time right now. And I always I like to go to Revelation 11 and 11 after that precept because it speaks about the three days and a half. All right? This is Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High Yahweh entered into them and they stood upon their feet. Right? And that three days and a half represents 350 years, being 1619 to 1969, when this truth started springing up in 1969. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. So they're in great fear right now. All right? So over there, you see them messing around with them Palestinians and that and whatever. Really, their main target is you Israelites, you Jakes, especially you Jakes that know the truth. All right? Especially us, because we're teaching the truth. We're teaching that Esau's kingdom is going to go down. All right. Remember, the scriptures say in, a, in the Apocrypha, Second Ezra six and nine. All right, um, which I'm right there. Spirit, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So how can America stand forever if Esau is the end of the world? And Esau is the wicked, by the way. All right, Esau Edom. The Lord hates these people, and they're known as the borders of wickedness. That's in Malachi one and four, and they're the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. See, we're in a time now. Where this man's kingdom is clearly divided. And a, and a nation divided shall not be able to stand. A kingdom divided shall not be able to stand. Alright? And this is why we always got to go into, when we read about the division of the kingdom, this man's kingdom, you know, it's good to go into Isaiah 19 because it speaks about that very division. And it speaks about the return of Yahweh Shai. Also, we spoke about the Lord coming in on a, on a gigantic ship. Okay? Liken unto what, uh, you know, Ezra, like Ezra saw, it was like a mountain that he flew upon. This is Isaiah chapter 19, verse 1. It says, the burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. Okay? And just like the same way that Yahweh Shai went, what is it? the scripture says, behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. That's a so-called UFO. All right? And the same way that he went, just like in Acts, the first chapter, is the same way that he's coming back. When the disciples were conversating with Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai was beamed up into the chariot, right? And a cloud received him out of their sight, right? 
So the Lord's going to come back the same way that he went, just like the angels told the disciples in Acts the first chapter. A swift cloud, Yahweh Shai is going to ride in upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the spiritual, you know, um, you know, uh, America is spiritually known as what? Sodom and Egypt. Revelation 11 and 8. That's why they have the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. You see, it all makes sense. Now, it couldn't straight up say this. See, the Lord didn't have it. You know, the word America is not in the scriptures. If the word America was in the scriptures, they straight up outlaw the scriptures, man. Straight off the bat. Okay, but the Lord put it in a, in a, in a parabolic sense to the point where we know, and through the spirit, we understand that America is spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. It's all in code. <clears throat> That's why when Yahweh Shai was asked by the disciples in Matthew 13, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given. So this is a part of the mysteries. All right, Amos 3 and 7, surely the Most High will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets, man. And a part of the secrets is knowing that this man's kingdom is going down. Part of the secret is knowing that America is spiritually uh, Sodom and Egypt. Okay. The part of the secret is knowing that America is Babylon the Great. Part of the secret is knowing these biblical prophecies. The mark of the beast is the chip. All right. And that when they push that, that things are going to move quick. Part of the secret is knowing about World War III is about to take place. And that's why you see tensions over there in the Middle East. That's a part of the secrets. And if you don't understand these things, then guess what? You're asleep. The Lord has poured upon you the spirit of deep sleep. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 11 and 7, let's get that. Uh, what then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. So the Lord's blinded you if you can't get it. So if you don't know what this swift cloud is that the Lord's going to ride in upon and you don't understand it, then the Lord has blinded you. You can't receive it. If you don't know uh, what this Egypt is talking about, like who the modern day Pharaoh is, that's Esau Edom today. Because he's the one with the power of the earth. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Job 9 and 24. All right. It says, and the idols of Egypt, this is back in Isaiah 19, excuse me. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. And everyone shall fight against his brother and everyone against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. No kingdom. And now, now we can go into that scripture. Okay. No kingdom divided, right? Let's get that scripture real quick. All right. This is uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 24. Well, let me start from 23. And he called... And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, okay? So if you don't understand these parables, you know, the Lord has put upon you the spirit of deep sleep. He says in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? And, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against itself and be divided he cannot stand but have an end and that's you see it's spiritual that i actually got this you know this uh in the book of mark because you can get this you know uh, alter alternate variations and in, in the different you can go to the one in luke all right and it's kind of worded a little bit differently but this one in mark says you know he cannot stand but have an end but what did biden just say we will stand forever right as long as the United States stands, we will stand forever. Well, guess what? That statue that was smote at the feet in Daniel the uh, second chapter, it weren't standing no more. Okay? Because once you smite something at the feet, all right, like, you, you know, you, you're trying to take someone down. You go for them feet. You go for them legs. You leg sweep them. You know, you grapple them. You, you, you know, you trip them up. And the Lord is going to trip this kingdom up. Smite this kingdom at, at the feet. And they ain't going to stand anymore. All right, so it's futile to believe that Esau's kingdom is going to stand forever because his kingdom is showing signs of division in these last days. Wars and rumors of wars 